Sometimes we get sent cameras that get us so excited to test that we have to make hyped up, over the top intros for them. And the Blackmagic Pocket 6K is definitely one of them. Magic Pocket cinema cameras have for the longest time been some of my favourite miniaturised cinema cameras that you can get. The original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema was so good that it still has a proud place in our kit bag, although it is slightly underused these days. Now, this will be just our first impressions of the Pocket 6K as we've only had it for a few days at the time of filming, but be prepared for a full review coming on the channel in a few days time. But without further ado, let's jump in and look at the Blackmagic Pocket 6K in a little more detail. First up is the sensor. And on this model, Blackmagic have done away with the 4 3rd sensor of old in favor of a larger Super 35 format. This coincides with these cameras now making use of an EF lens mount. Perfect if you're like us and have a lot of EF lenses already in your kit bag. That Super 35 sensor produces a whole host of shooting resolutions and frame rates from 6K 50fps, 4K DCI, 1080p 120fps and pretty much everything in between. The sensor is also capable of producing an incredible 13 stops of dynamic range and makes use of a dual native ISO system for a really clean low light shooting. We've also got Codex Galore, which is no surprise considering this is a mini cine camera. From Blackmagic's proprietary B-Raw in its various flavors to the almost universal host of ProRes options. The rear of the camera features a gorgeous five inch HD touchscreen LCD monitor and the menu system within is both easy to use and from a UI design point of view, it's actually really impressive to look at. So our first impressions of using the 6K are honestly jaw dropping. I'm having a genuine hard time believing that you can get an image quality this good from a camera at this price point. But that is what Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras have always done, defied beliefs and price points. So I suppose I'm just saying that the 6K continues that massive bang for buck trend. With the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, you only get those huge frame sizes when you're using the Blackmagic RAW codec. Now, historically, that would have been a disaster for most casual video editors that don't use DaVinci Resolve. However, there is a plugin available from the Blackmagic website to install inside Premiere Pro, which allows it to read the B-RAW files inside the program. The bit rates of these B-RAW files are, as expected, pretty hefty, coming in at around 400 megabytes per second on average. However, if you're willing to compromise, you can, of course, make use of the much more versatile and lightweight ProRes 422HQ codec, which uses around a quarter of the data, but only when in 4K or below. That said, that 4K image really does hold up, both in terms of technical performance and also in its aesthetic qualities. It is still really beautiful an image and in a much more usable file format for the more casual content creator. Now I know that this is sacrificing the bleeding edge of what this camera is technically capable of, but for me, that balance between workflow and quality is always as important as just the quality on its own. Shooting in 4K using the ProRes 422HQ codec is the sweet spot with me for this camera. Much like the image quality, I've been blown away by how easy this camera is to use. Whoever designed the menu systems needs to be recognized here because they are so nice and easy to use, it actually puts all other manufacturers to shame. Beyond the user experience of the menus, the camera is just a joy to shoot with. I've never struggled or stumbled with it, and unlike a lot of new cameras when you get them, there was barely any learning curve at all. It just feels like a very intuitive filmmaking tool and one that isn't gonna hold me up or back on location. Oh. 
Of course, there also is some negative points to cover from our first impressions. The first is the lack of any internal ND filters, which from a video camera perspective, is an odd one to miss out. It's not a big deal. You can, of course, just attach a variable ND filter to your EF lens, but it is something to point out. And also, for those people that are stepping up from the DSLR or mirrorless world into the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, the lack of continuous autofocus is something you're gonna have to get used to. So after only a few days with this lovely little camera, it's safe to say that I've already fallen for it. I can't wait to spend some more time with it, shoot some more footage with it, and really get to grips with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. Be sure to look out for our full review on this camera coming really soon. But in short, this is a camera that not only defies its form factor and its price point, it's one that's exceeded my expectations as to what is possible from a camera at this price point. For some more information on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, there's some links below. And whilst you're down there, why not consider subscribing to the channel or even signing up to the Filmmakers Club on Patreon. That's been my grab and go review, first impression style. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.